One of Baylor's newest football coaches did not watch a single second of film on his unit from last year. But honestly, that's not that bad. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and happy Tuesday to you. Welcome to another episode of Locked on Baylor. I am your host, Cam Stewart from ESPN Central Texas, thanking you for making it your first listen today and every day. As you heard in that open there, we're starting it with football a little bit, talking with new offensive line coach Mason Miller and his interesting approach to learning his new team. But I promise it's not that bad. And Zach Eady, of course, has taken the world by storm the last couple of weeks as he goes towards his second straight national player of the year and now actually got Purdue to the final four. And just how close we were to saying Zach Eady has taken the world by storm and he has taken Baylor to the final four. So close. And again, nothing withering in Waco for the women's basketball program. In fact, it might well be blooming next year with the talent that the women's basketball team has coming back to the Foster Pavilion in 2025. We'll go over that as well. We are deep in spring football right now. Baylor, of course, with a a tumultuous, I guess, offseason in terms of the the new coaches in the door and the coaches that were leaving. Uh, Very famously, Dave Aranda stays and kind of puts a new staff together. And one of the ones I was excited about is offensive line coach Mason Miller. And I've said this before on the show, you know, I I can't get too excited about positional coaches for the most part, uh, the exception of those who are great on the recruiting trail like Keenan Hall. Uh, But Mason Miller was one that I got excited about. He's the one who comes from Tarleton State, but is part of that Mike Leach coaching tree, that air raid he he coached with him at Mississippi State. And it, it showed, that hire showed, that Baylor was serious about getting back to the the spread it out, air raid kind of style, make you defend every blade of grass, throw it, just play the game vertically. Uh, we we had heard Dallas Baker, the, the receivers coach, talk about that. Uh, we heard Jake Spavadol talk about that, the new OC, and then we saw the hire in Mason Miller that showed that that is true. That is what we are getting towards. It was the first time that it was no longer words. It was actions out there by making the hire of Mason Miller. So when people were like, why are we getting hyped up about bringing in a guy from Tarleton, the OC from Tarleton? That's why. And he finally got to talk to the media just here recently. And he had a fascinating response to a question from Bryce Cherry, our pal, uh, from the Waco Tribune Herald. Bryce had asked, you know, this was a tough season for the offensive line last year. Uh, wh- what did you see on film? And Mason had quite the response. When you kind of came in here, uh, I'm sure you looked at a lot of film from last year. That, that group had had its share of struggles. Did you have to like kind of rebuild confidence when you were starting out off or? I'll be honest with you, I didn't look at one inch of film. Okay. Um, and, and, and the reason being is everybody does things differently. And what our offensive system is going to incorporate is a different scheme. So I did not want to have any pre-judgments on how this kid played and this kid played and that kid did this and this. That, that's got nothing to do with it. So what we're going to do is be the best that we can be every single day uh, and, and really focus on one play at a time, one rep at a time. And I know all those are kind of cliches, but if you don't do that, you're not going to get very good anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Hey, big points for honesty. Big points for honesty. He didn't watch any film on this 2023 Baylor offensive line. And boy, I wish I could revert my brain to have not seen that either. But You hear that from a coach, and your initial reaction is, what? This guy just admitted he hasn't watched any film. He's going and he's coaching these guys right now, and he hasn't watched a bit of film. But he makes a a good point, and actually his best point is one that he doesn't even make in there, is that when push comes to shove, this is a completely different task he is asking of these guys than what they were asking of them last year. Blocking for the run game and the wide zone 
is much, much, much different from blocking in, in an air raid spread style of offense that they're going to be running this year. I mean, when I first off, it's a lot more pass protection than it is uh, than it is run blocking. And for those of you familiar, innately familiar with the wide zone, so much of it is is the running back reading um, his his tackles or his guards, wherever his gap that he is that he needs to hit. Whereas, you know, air raid offense is a lot of pass protection against three man fronts. And right there, I, I'm okay hearing that answer as, as a skeptical fan of, no, I haven't watched any film because this is going to be completely different. I'm okay with that. And I think what it does for Mason Miller mentally as well and therefore trickles down to his players, is it's a clean slate. You know, the, he, Mason Miller is not going to be, you know, screaming down Clark Barrington's throat in the first week of April. This is exactly the crap you pulled in that in that third down against Texas Tech last year that cost us points. Won't be saying that because he didn't watch it. It's a clean slate for all of these guys. But what he can say is, you know, Clark, I, you, you missed that. You missed that assignment just like you did last week in practice. And it kind of allows for these guys to hold each other accountable still, coaches and players, while also not dwelling on what happened last year. Because this was a brutal unit last year. That's why we were so invested to seeing who was going to come in this offseason as the offensive line coach, and even more invested when we had to hire a second offensive line coach in the same offseason uh, because they were they were the worst rushing team in the conference. They allowed, I think it was seven or eight more sacks than, than the next worst team in the conference. They were worse than the Big 12 in that category, and it was horrific to watch. I brought up that Tech game because that's the one that stands out. I mean, Blake Shapin just... He couldn't stay on his feet. He was getting <laughs> suplexed uh, by these these tech defensive linemen, and it was happening all season long. Uh, Baylor could not dig themselves out of holes because mainly because uh, they they would not win in the trenches on either side of the ball. And Mason Miller not watching a bit of film for that is more beneficial than I think we than we think. I mean, first off, he knows what he's doing. He's done this at a, at a high level. Um, and second off, it allows these guys to have a clean slate to, you know, hopefully build their confidence back up because they're not hearing about all those things they did wrong last year to bear down and say, hey, you guys are good enough to play here. So we're going to start there rather than last year when, it, when you guys might have thought you weren't good enough. We're going to start where you are good enough and we're going to build it from there because we're all learning this offense the same. And that that I will use as a excuse, quote unquote excuse, to not watch any film on your unit uh, the year before and learn these players' names and their abilities through what you see in practice. Today's episode of Locked on Baylor is brought to you by LinkedIn Talent Solutions. Brock Cunningham, Armando Baycott, you guys hearing me? LinkedIn, that's the time to do it. A lot of college basketball players are out there looking for a job right now. And when you are hiring for your small businesses, or just one, uh, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. Maybe it's not Brock Cunningham. Maybe it's not Perry Ellis or or those guys. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. It's not like any other job board, okay? It's got a vast network of more than a billion professionals. A billion makes it, making it the best place to hire. And hiring is so easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours, okay? They know that you're wearing so many hats, okay? And you don't have all the time in the world and the resources to set just to hiring. That's why LinkedIn is constantly finding new ways to make the process easier. They, even, they just launched this feature. It helps you write your job descriptions. So you don't have to hire somebody for that, making the process once again easier and quicker. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. 
you could be the next. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. And of course, terms and conditions do apply. So I'm going to give the pass to Mason Miller for not watching film. That's okay to me. Um, and being a Baylor fan, being a Baylor fan, we hear so many great stories of the almost not quite. This, this guy was so close to coming to Baylor. It's usually football, right? Ladanian Tomlinson was in our own backyard right here at University High in Waco, and they let him go to, to TCU. Uh, there was a scrawny young quarterback from Austin Westlake in the late 90s who wanted to go to Baylor, really wanted to go to Baylor. And the Bears told him he was too short. And granted, he was pretty short, but then he led Purdue to the Rose Bowl, and then he won a Super Bowl, and then in a couple of years, he's going to be in Canton, Ohio in the Hall of Fame. That's Drew Brees. And... It, it, Earl Campbell was really considering Baylor. He loved Grant Taft. We were basically second on the list. But, of course, he goes to UT. It's the 70s. And he wins the Heisman Trophy. He's one of the greatest running backs ever to play the game. There's so many stories like this for Baylor. And now, because they are starting to attract great basketball players, we're going to start to hear it for basketball, too. And one of them is a guy who is cementing his legacy as a college basketball great. And he has been open in the past about talking about just how close he was to playing for Scott Drew and the Baylor Bears. I'm talking about Zach Eady, the 7'4 superstar for Purdue, who is going to be the, the second, second year in a row he's going to be the National Player of the Year um, and has finally kind of gotten the monkey off his back, so to speak, by getting Purdue past the first weekend. And now past the second weekend, they will be playing in the Final Four this very weekend. And Baylor, thankfully, has had enough success, in the regular season anyway, the last couple of years, that we haven't been sitting here thinking, oh, if only we had Zach Eady. But now, on April 2nd of 2024, when it's three straight round of 32 exits and Zach Eady's now playing in the final four, you start to think that a little bit. When Purdue was going out in the first round to a 16 seed, you weren't thinking about it. But now you're thinking about it. I certainly am. I certainly am. He'd already have a national championship ring and probably another one, if we're being honest. Um, there are people who don't like the way Zach Eady plays. There are some people who think, you know, that's not how the game is played anymore with the with the big, relatively unathletic. He's still a good athlete. Um, um, and, and you see that and you think, well, it's not played through seven foot centers anymore. Right. And I understand that. I think slash thought that I thought this was more of a guard driven college basketball. At least it was in the last couple of years when when Baylor was winning big in it. But the more I look at that, the more I think maybe that's not the case. And I, I think that because I saw an interesting tweet from a great basketball mind, Frank Martin, who has knocked Baylor out of the tournament before and led South Carolina to the Final Four, uh, was at Kansas State for years uh, before Bruce Weber, and also is now turning around UMass, I'm just saying. Uh, but he had a tweet the other night that said, huh, you know, this is this is interesting. I look at Purdue, a team that plays through their center more than pretty much anybody in the country offensively, and they're going to the Final Four. UConn, they play through their center. They're in the Final Four. This was still back in the Elite Eight, by the way. Uh, Alabama attacks the rim with their centers. Not a great defensive team, but they play through the center. They're in the Final Four. Duke plays through their center. NC State definitely plays through their center and they're going to the final four. So maybe, maybe we are reverting back a little bit as, as college basketball as a whole it is going back to playing through the big guy. And a big reason why is the success that Zach Eady is having right now at Purdue. Um, because a couple years ago when it was Luca Garza, a similar kind of player, he was playing at Iowa it was still guard driven and they couldn't even get to the sweet 16. 
But now that might be starting to change. Baylor is a team that is one of the quintessential college basketball teams that is guard-driven, and they can't get out of the first weekend anymore. So, all that to say, boy, I, it's not from a lack of trying. It's not like anyone at Baylor did anything wrong, but you do start to think, I wonder what it would be like to have to have Zach Eady in there. And and Mike Carmen, who writes for Golden Black uh, for Purdue, had this great story that came out. It was a few months ago, um, but it's all about Zach Eady and his recruitment. And he was he's a Canadian kid. He was playing down in Florida for IMG, and his, it talks about how his mom was so happy that he's able to wear shorts. You know, don't have to find pants for him. Uh, this seven footer uh, high school kid, he gets to wear shorts all the time. And they visited Purdue, and his mom is saying, "You know, Zach got off the plane. I looked at him, and he's wearing shorts. It's October, and I'm shaking my head. And I looked at Zach and said, "Buddy, it's really cold here." And he said, "I forgot what state I'm in." And as the conversation continued, Julia asked Zach about living in a region with four seasons again instead of summer the whole year round, like he gets in Florida. And she said, well, he's a Canadian boy. And Zach told me, yeah, I kind of miss winter. Ah, does that not drive you crazy? As someone from the Northeast, it drives me crazy because sometimes I do feel like that. But to think that we might have missed out on a guy because he liked the winter and we don't have that as long as they do anyway. That must make you just that must make your blood boil. Like, oh my God, I can't believe we missed that. Now they do say in the article it wasn't just the weather thing. Um, but that he almost, Zach Eady almost didn't even make the recruiting trip to Purdue because he had his mind set. He he went to Purdue and did the did the recruiting trip basically because his mom asked him to. But he said, quote, I was really close to being a Bay or Bear. If my mom didn't talk me out of it on the visit, I probably would have gone. At the time, I had no Purdue offer, and they weren't really in the picture. <laughs> if if Zach Eady is cutting down the nets in Phoenix, not using a ladder, that quote is going to just hit like a cold wind in Indianapolis in January. Ah. Oh. Because Baylor was hard on his recruiting trail. Like Scott was one of the first to offer him, if not the first. They were given the full sell. It, Scott and Jacus and Tang and Brooks, all of them, they were giving the full sell to Zach Eady. And they'll probably won't ever talk about it, but I would love to, to hear what the Baylor coaches had to say about that recruitment because they were so close. They were so close. And I don't know... Why Zach Eady's mom loved Purdue so much? Maybe she didn't love the religious angle of Baylor. I don't know, but it was that close. That close. And it might be one that we look back on and think, what could have been? You got another national championship in there. Like, Edie was an impact player as a sophomore, like a all-Big Ten kind of player as a sophomore, which is the great like what if team for Baylor in 2022, obviously 2020 is a great what if team because they didn't have in the tournament, but 22, they didn't play healthy that whole year or except for the first 15 games, so they're 15 and zero and number one in the country. That team could have absolutely been in the final four with someone like Zach Eady on there. And again, not taking anything away from that team. They, they dealt with the injuries they had, but they had and Jonathan Chamwich had an excellent year, but platooning Edie in there, Terrific. Last year's team, I'm not saying Final Four, but a totally different team. Totally different team. And this year, you might not have Eve Misi, which stinks. I, I love having Eve Misi. Don't get me wrong. But you've also got a National Player of the Year player in Zach Eady. Uh, just what could have been. I wouldn't trade these regular seasons the last couple of years, but... Certainly now seeing Zach Eady in the Final Four and Baylor out in the round of 32 again. Um, it definitely makes you think. And I wonder if he would have gone down as one of the what ifs, but he could technically come back for another year of college basketball. He says he's not going to, he's going to get picked at the end of the first round, but who knows? Maybe Baylor can sweeten the pot and get him here as a grad transfer for one year and say, Hey, let's, you know, you've had this heartbreaking loss in the national semifinals to DJ Burns and, and NC state. Why don't we go and win the whole thing? If you come here to Baylor. Nah, probably not. Probably not. But boy, what could have been? 
I'll tell you what could have been and what is, okay? Passion, drive, and patience. Whoever is winning the national championship, that's the things they use. Passion, drive, and patience. Because that formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. I mean, tires. I need to go get a new tire for my car. I'm looking at eBay Motors. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay, you're you're burning rubber. You're not burning cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car into the MVP and bring home those huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions to apply, and that eBay guaranteed fit is only available to our U.S. customers. Once again, keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Women's basketball, obviously, with the tough exit in the Sweet 16, they took number one USC right down to the wire. And, you know, a bounce here, a bounce there, and you're talking about an Elite Eight team playing last night, tonight, as I'm recording this, um, and, you know, a potential huge return trip to the Final Four. And instead, it's, it's a sad ending, but a terrific run, and... You know, Nikki Collin getting a bit emotional in that press conference, which we played for you yesterday, saying, uh, we are not withering. Nothing is withering here in Waco. We are here to stay. And I mentioned in there, I, I hate when fans are like, don't worry, we'll be back. Because nothing is ever guaranteed in sports. But there are times where you say, this team will be back. We said it about the men's team after the 2020 season got canceled. We said, if 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 these guys, which Macy Oteague and Jared Butler both declared for the draft, but if these guys come back, we'll be back there. We, we will be a Final Four team. And in terms of looking at it from the view of, of this women's basketball team and the Sweet 16, I think they will be back. I believe in them. And part of it is because, just I first off, I believe in the coach. And secondly, they're bringing almost every impact player on their roster back. You know, Barring something crazy in the transfer portal, which I don't expect, they're bringing a ton of talent Back. I just looked down the roster. Danae Fritz, back. Yaya Felder, back. Jana Van Geitenbeek, back. Dariana Little Page Bugs, back. Jada Walker, March Hero, back. Bella Fauntleroy, so back. Sarah Andrews, back. Like that, that is that is a formidable team right there. Not let alone the 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 players will be bringing in at high school, and let alone what you could be tapping into in the transfer portal. Because you've got a coach down here that the players love. You're starting to see results. You see a, a, a certified style, which is something that it took a couple years for Nikki Collin to integrate into the team because, you know, her first year, they basically had seven players. Second year, they have a bunch of injuries. And now this year, which had some bumps in the road, absolutely, you saw kind of Nikki ball out there, right? Uh, and they even mentioned this on the broadcast on Saturday. Baylor was given USC fits when they were able to push the ball. That they're gonna like we talked about football earlier. Uh, women's basketball is gonna be the same way. They want to play fast. They want to play up and down the court. They're gonna be a high volume three point shooting team, but one that ideal ideally can play you inside out. And they showed they showed that all season long, where it worked really well with a thirteen and 14 and zero start to the season where it hit a 10 and seven snag. And when it went to the sweet 16, the style was the same. Do I think they need a, a, a scoring post player in there? Yes. Yes, I do. Because they would always lose when they got outscored in the paint. Always out rebounded, outscored in the paint. Baylor was going to lose. So yeah, I think you need to hit that. But when you're looking around at the other teams, you know, UT brings back Rory Harmon. Like that's obviously huge, but when you're looking at, and they will, they'll be in the sec obviously next year, but when you look at the other teams, it, it's tough to bring this much talent back in the transfer portal era, even in women's basketball, uh, where you don't have as, you don't have players leaving early. Like it is, it is rare to bring back such a nucleus that will now be in their 
third slash fourth slash fifth years in the program, third or fourth years under Nikki Collin. Um, th- that is where you should see it come together. That's why I do believe that that team will be back there. They've got a style. They've got veterans. They've got leadership. And more than just veterans and leadership, they got players. Like these girls are really good players that are coming back. Uh, and so I do think you see Baylor take that next step next year. And hopefully 52 weeks from now, we are talking about them playing in Elite Eight and with a chance to go to a Final Four. Because I think they can, they can get there. And I believe in this team. Let me know what you think about this team and whether they can get that get back. Drop that down in the comments below. Let me know what you think about a, a position coach who doesn't watch film yet. Drop that down in the comments below too. And am I playing too much of the what if game with Zach Eady? Would you take him right now? Let's just say grad transfer next year. Zach Eady wants to come to Baylor. Are you taking him? I think you'd be a fool not to. Drop that down in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe. Tell a friend. Thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. Your favorite show will be back tomorrow. And that is, of course, Locked On Baylor.